afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. <clears throat> First, I, I, I would like to uh, say uh, thank you for um, Samuel for uh, inviting inviting me to uh, today's workshop and uh, tomorrow conference. Uh, I'm not a scientific person at all. Uh, uh, I'm now working for uh, Igor Gaidar Foundation to uh, organize uh, the public lectures and uh, uh, seminars. And uh, uh, for many uh, years, I'm, I write uh, the columns for um, Russian peri periodicals, uh, which are conducted by uh, uh, foreign company, uh, companies. Uh, the monthly uh, Forbes and uh, daily business newspaper Vedomosti, um, the owners owners of uh, uh, which are uh, Wall Street Journal and uh, Financial Times. So uh, uh, the remarks from me uh, uh, can be seen uh, like uh, the remarks uh, from uh, from a, a scientific person, but uh, from um, from someone who uh, observes uh, the politics in Russia. <coughs> Uh, the paper, uh, uh, the very, very interesting paper of uh, uh, Samuel and uh, Graham, summarizes uh, the find findings about how the ideological and uh, political contestation uh, returned to the Russian political landscape after uh, September 2011 when uh, Vladimir Putin announced that he, he would return to uh, Russian presidency. The main advantage uh, uh, of the article, I think, uh, is uh, tracking how uh, the Russian participated in uh, opposition activity from, uh, from the winter of uh, 2011 to the uh, summer uh, 2015. Uh, uh, what uh, encourage sub supporters of uh, the opposition and what, what uh, prevent them from, from uh, the activity participation uh, in the um, protest action. Uh, uh, chapter 1 describes uh, the Kremlin's turn from, uh, from peace to war, like uh, uh, they said, uh, from, from Medvedev's modernization to the rise of coercion against uh, the opposition, against the media, against against uh, NGO, uh, NGOs and uh, civic groups in the recent years. Mm. Agreeing with uh, this uh, description, I would like to add a, a very important point, uh, uh, I think. Uh, the political mm, uh, regime in, in, in Russia doesn't become uh, doesn't become authori authoritarian per second in in, in September 20, 2011. Mm. Uh, the evolution of uh, of uh, Putin's uh, regime towards authoritarianism uh, has been gradual, uh, um, consistent, and and uh, continuous. The method uh, Putin came to power. Uh, and um, his first action uh, when when he took power <coughs> had left no doubt uh, doubts uh, in the uh, in the 90s the democracy and uh, capitalism in Russia was defeated and uh, in uh, 1999 uh, the, uh, the security forces came to power which would be um, and, and, and they would would like to uh, to uh, restore order, like uh, they said. The destruction of independent um, TV uh, uh, in, in uh, 2000 uh, uh, year, following the exile of uh, uh, Gusinski Berezovsky, have shown that Putin sees the control over TV like, like uh, the key condition of, uh, of his power. Of course, in that time, the opposition in Russia then uh, uh, was very weak and didn't have any any influence at all. Uh, many were hoping that uh, Putin will improve uh, the business environment without uh, without destroying the, the democratic uh, competition and uh, free speech. But there were serious uh, doubts and uh, in uh, in it uh, then then too. <clears throat> When uh, when uh, Khodorkovsky was 
arrested and Putin refused to talk with the leaders of, uh, of the civic, uh, civil society on this subject. And when, uh, when uh, in um, 2004, uh, Putin cancelled the election of, uh, of governors on the pretext of the uh, fight against terrorism, uh, um, uh, and the need to you know, strengthen uh, the power vertical. At that time, uh, the last doubts about what uh, what for Putin came to power, uh, I think, uh, uh, disappeared. Despite uh, the uh, tax cut and improving the uh, business climate in, in the first years of uh, Putin's uh, first, first pre pre presidency, uh, the country was gradually moving to the uh, crony capitalism model. Therefore, in my, in my view, it's wrong to uh, talk about uh, the events of, of the year 2011 as, uh, as about a radical change in, in the trend. A more reasonable is to consider uh, first uh, uh, the establishment of uh, control over TV 10 years um, before as a prototype of what will happen in the field of freedom of speech after, after uh, Russia um, have annexed uh, Crimea. And, uh, and um, um, it is more, more reasonable to, to consider the, the war with Georgia and uh, the de facto annexation of Abkhazia in uh, South, South Ossetia in, in uh, 2008 year as a pattern of what Russia did uh, six years later in the Crimea and uh, Donbass region. Uh, another uh, example, um, uh, uh, Putin uh, um, uh, thinks that uh, uh, the NGO British Council uh, works against Russia not, not uh, uh, um, today, but uh, 10 years ago too. And, uh, and uh, the Kremlin was trying to uh, shut this NGO in uh, uh, ten, 10 years ago. Uh, perhaps uh, 2011 was uh, the point of no return for, for uh, Putin as uh, the authoritarian leader. Uh, and, and after that, uh, um, Putin have lost uh, the opportunity to uh, return to a democratic and uh, capitalist model of development. But uh, until that year, Russia was very close to that point too. Uh, uh, the key moment in the growth of uh, uh, confrontation with the outside world and uh, in the evolution of the regime to an uh, authoritarian mode of action were uh, to establish uh, state control over TV the case of Yukos and Khodorkovsky uh, mm, 12 years ago, and uh, the rising of state-owned uh, companies in, in the years of 2006-2008, uh, uh, and the, the war with uh, Georgia mm, seven years ago. Therefore, uh, I would say that uh, the maximum concentration of uh, political power uh, in the hands of Putin and uh, the consolidation of economic power in his hands, in, in, in the hands of uh, his friends, was a constant uh, um, intention. And, uh, and the uh, deliberate <laughs> strategy of the Kremlin uh, since uh, 1999. Unfortunately, uh, civil society in Russia had realized where the country is moving only, only uh, in 2011, 12 years after. Uh, during the four previous years when Medvedev was, uh, was a president, many have, uh, had totally, uh, many, many have had uh, totally unjustified, I think, uh, unjustified hopes for gradual political and uh, economic evolution of the country to, to, uh, towards uh, a modern society. However, the events that I have li listed above uh, actually determined uh, the reaction of the Kremlin on, on the opposition protests. Uh, Kremlin's reaction uh, to, to um, opposition activities uh, in the recent years uh, were 
I think, predetermined by one simple fact. Uh, the purpose of, uh, of Putin's policy is and was only to maximize his reign in time and maximize the power uh, in his hands. The achievement of this objective involves uh, the removal of all threats to Putin's leadership, both uh, external and, and uh, internal um, threats. So I oppose that it uh, is not quite correct uh, to speak about the political situation in Russia until uh, 2011 as about old uh, uh, regime and after 2011 as about new regime that replaced uh, the old one. Uh, on the contrary, the political regime has, has remained uh, the same, I think. Uh, but um, but uh, in 2011 and 2012 years, it was faced with new threats to its uh, existence. This, co uh, this caused Putin to go to the strategy of uh, mass uh, mobilization, uh, the apology, apology of uh, which was uh, uh, the annexation of Crimea and to politics of, of f further uh, restricting the activities of, of his uh, opponents, up to eliminating them uh, the, uh, as it was with uh, Boris Nemtsov. Of course, uh, uh, some part of the uh, elite uh, has good wishes addressed to uh, Medvedev even, even in uh, summer uh, of um, 2011. Uh, Mm, this was uh, the strategy for uh, him, which prepared by uh, the Institute of uh, Contemporary, uh, Contemporary Development in Russia. But seriously, to believe in the realization of such uh, scenarios was, uh, was impossible even then. Those who uh, uh, read uh, Putin's, uh, Putin's intention uh, to, to remain in power have been subjected to, to repression uh, uh, ten years ago, uh, as like as um, seven years ago. <clears throat> uh, uh, okay, uh, uh, I would lost some some uh, remarks. Uh, <clears throat> so. Um, mm, uh, what happened in uh, 2011 is uh, the final uh, first uh, the final cl cl clarification of the nature of uh, of the Putin's re regime for Russian citizens and for uh, external observers, and uh, second the uh, divergence between uh, the Putin's goal uh, to stay in power as long as possible and uh, and f f um, from one side and uh, the benefits of. Um, economic development of the country from, uh, from the other side. Uh, before that year, uh, the economic development of, of the country had helped Putin to buy uh, the loyalty of, uh, of um, elites and, and ordinary citizens as well. After that, uh, it became apparent, uh, uh, apparent that uh, educated and affluent citizens will not put up uh, with uh, Putin's intention to remain in power for his entire life. Uh, therefore, from from uh, that year, um, to bet on uh, economic growth would be a mistake for Putin, and he doesn't do uh, this mistake. Uh, uh, the economic growth gradually undermined his uh, ability to retain power because of over time more and more people would get in reach and uh, visiting foreign countries uh, uh, and so on. They would deal not only with ensuring their uh, survival, but they would be engaged in, uh, in the civic activities, including uh, opposition activity. So uh, the former political flexibility of Putin before uh, the year um, 2011 is only a fact, is only a function, uh, I think, of the absence of uh, of protest activity in the country, and uh, the absence of uh, of uh, the protest activity is, um, in its turn, uh, a function of misunderstanding from uh, from uh, citizens of uh, the true nature of Putin's uh, regime. Uh, the chapter uh, two uh, portrays um, the rising of uh, opposition and key actors of this movement. The authors uh, analyzes uh, the engagement of the, in the um, protest activity uh, through the membership uh, uh, in Facebook 
and, and activity of Facebook users and in communities which devoted <coughs> to uh, protests. Uh, this allowed to draw a quite clear picture of the um, protest movement. However, if uh, uh, it would be said about a, a few pitfalls uh, in of, of such uh, of such an analysis, first you would take into account uh, the behavior of uh, users of Facebook, uh, one of which I am. Uh, the analysis of network <coughs> participation uh, uh, in the chapter two traces uh, the action of uh, Facebook users in the several communities, but there are Facebook communities having having a different uh, nature. For example, uh, the communities we were at Balotna Square and um, communities in the white tape of, uh, of uh, protest were designed to gather people on one or two concrete protest action, actions. Uh, for the most of uh, uh, opposition, they, uh, uh, um, uh, the most communities don't function as, as a permanent community where the people uh, read news and communicate about uh, what is happening now. Uh, the nature of the communities like uh, like uh, Russia in prison, or uh, Transparency International Russia, about which uh, uh, Samuel and um, Graham uh, were writing, uh, is different, I think. Uh, this organization are dedicated to solving um, relevant <coughs> problems, uh, the finest the, the fight against uh, corruption and assistance in um, detention, people in detention. But uh, people are taking part in the activities of such organization, not through the, uh, the membership in their communities and uh, not through uh, the activity in them. Rather, they subscribe to a feed from the leaders of these communities, Olga Romanova and Kirina Panfilova, uh, uh, respectively. And they uh, and they read the recordings, like them, likes them, comments them, shares them, and help this organization outside uh, the Facebook. As for me personally, I try re regularly uh, to help uh, the work of uh, Olga Romanov organization, uh, but never served uh, in this community and never was active in it. Uh, to track my sympathy, for this organization, uh, organization through Facebook, you can only analyze uh, personal interaction between between me and Romanova, likes, comment, comments, sharings, uh, etc. But not by analyzing activity in the community, Russia in prison. I think many other people are just like me. Uh, personally, I am online in Facebook at least two hours per day, and, and my activity uh, there is, is is not private. However, I rarely take part in, in the activities of any groups and any communities uh, in, in Facebook. Uh, <clears throat> many people are uh, the same. Uh, uh, so it's, it's very difficult to say, it, uh, to say that only one person of those who were uh, at Balotna Square two, year, uh, two years later took part in anti-war march uh, based, based on the analysis of the activities in relevant uh, communities. <coughs> another another example is uh, 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 the protest against uh, Russia Orthodox Church construction in Trafianka Park, uh, about which uh, uh, Sam uh, was saying about. Uh, as for me, I uh, uh, I have spent my childhood childhood near near this park, and my mother lives here uh, uh, now, and. Um, I took part in in two meeting, meetings uh, uh, against against uh, uh, the construction and uh, signed several petitions against uh, it. Um, and uh, I posted uh, I posted uh, one or two um, um, times in, in, in Facebook uh, 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 against uh, the construction. But uh, but uh, I knew only from uh, the article of, of Samuel and uh, Gulen that uh, the protesters against the construction have the community in Facebook. I didn't know it uh, before. Mm. Uh, 30 seconds, uh, okay. Uh, uh, chapter 3. Uh, um, <laughs> Contains a very interesting um, um, finding. Uh, 
uh, about about uh, uh, the personal trait uh, agreeableness um, as a very good uh, predictor of the uh, of the opposition activity in Russia. Uh, I believe that uh, this intuition is correct, uh, and uh, the mechanism here is uh, the exposure of uh, people to the government uh, brainwashing by by uh, TV. The agreeable people would agree with with uh, what uh, the government are telling them, or uh, or maybe they decide not to pro pro protest, even in the case uh, they don't believe uh, our government. As far as uh, they think, the political uh, regime is strong enough, and any protest activity is prohibited or may uh, affect uh, their career and uh, well-being. But this, uh, but this uh, approach leaves one uh, unsolved uh, puzzle, I think. Why agreeableness uh, is such a common trait between Russians? Uh, why it, uh, why are it uh, re reproduced as well in the uh, 1970s in USSR and in the modern Russia too? And what do influence on the dynamics uh, of agreeableness? Here I have two suggestions. Uh, uh, first, uh, 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 suppose uh, uh, the analysis of the uh, value structure and uh, its uh, dynamics can help uh, uh, here. Um, there are numerous uh, articles uh, uh, from which we can see that people in Russia are afraid to deal with uh, life's, uh, life's difficulties without help of uh, help from state. They don't trust other people and uh, they don't trust even themselves, don't believe in their own abilities to improve uh, the world around them. I think uh, that's uh, what makes them so um, obedient and uh, uh, agreeable. The second uh, is uh, uh, we need to understand how uh, the stimulus are working, when the government is to punish the people for, for uh, the uh, non-agreeableness and, um, and uh, to reward them for, for the agreeableness and uh, conformity, they become agreeable. Uh, the situation will change only when uh, the stimulus will work in the uh, reverse order, when to agree with the political uh, regime will be not profitable for people as it was in uh, 1990 uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, 1991 years. Thank you very much. Thank you.